Good. Thank you, Paul, for that introduction. Um, so just to quickly introduce myself as well. So um, I'm Keo. I work on the customer success team here at Beeswax. Um, I'm actually based out of the West Coast office in San Francisco. So nice to meet you all. Uh, and then the topic that we're covering today is really just this problem of why is my line item not serving? So this is an incredibly common bump in the road that our customers face and also their teams face. Um, and when this happens, it's really nice to just have some next steps or an idea of what can I do to look into this and what can I do to start the troubleshooting process. So with that, um, I've thought of these three kind of buckets of um, how to start uh, looking into line item troubleshooting. And these are trafficking objects set up, uh, the real time bidding graph and then the activity logs. And then lastly, inventory availability. So uh, kind of covering through these topics today and then just how um, underneath each one, what can you do to look into a line item and try to identify the issue that uh, your line item might be seeing. So diving into trafficking object setup. So on this left-hand side, you'll see um, our hierarchy of advertisers, campaigns, and then line items. You'll also see that there's creatives and then the creative line associations um, as well. So the first check that I'd recommend doing is definitely just checking through each of these objects and making sure that they're active. So this seems like a really obvious one, um, and it is, but uh, I think this comes up a lot because as your team start to really scale on our platform and build a lot of campaigns out and build a lot of lines out and a lot of creatives, um, it can be hard to kind of remember uh, to toggle on the active or inactive at each object. So, uh, this would probably be the first number one check that you want to do is just make sure everything is active as expected. So in the same vein, uh, definitely looking through the start and end dates of your campaigns and making sure that they're aligned with the flights that you are looking for. So at the line item level, you can also set flights. Um, also at the creative level, you can set flights. So if you want certain creatives to run for you know, a portion of your campaign or line item, you can set up different creatives to send uh, start and end up certain dates within that line item um, or campaign. So again, you know, just with the nuances of having flights or, you know, just even um, setting up start and end dates and kind of fudging the date by accident, it's really, really good to just double check, are my start and end dates correct? And um, are they correct at the campaign level, the line item level? And then um, if relevant, the creative level as well. So, Lastly here, um, in terms of the budget, so you just want to be really aware of what budget you're setting at the campaign level. Um, so that campaign level budget will actually supersede the line item level budgets. So at the line item level, uh, you want to make sure that um, the sum total of your line item budgets are within or lower than your total overall campaign budget. Um, if that's not the case and you, ask, you, know, you end up extending or increasing the line item budget on certain lines and then your total sum of line item budgets is over your campaign budget, um, your line items will actually stop serving uh, because it's listening to the campaign level budget. So it's important just to double check that uh, your campaign level budget fits your line item level budget and um, yeah, just making, making that check across uh, these campaigns and lines. So digging a little bit deeper into the line item setup itself. So now you'll see the line items, which are really your tactics within each campaign. Um, you'll see the targeting templates, which are, um, I guess, the specific targeting uh, keys that you're using on this line item. So an example would be inventory um, or geo as US, uh, maybe the place of type is video. You have certain site lists or app bundle lists that you're applying at this line item level. Um, that would be included within your targeting template. And then this last one, strategy, uh, this would be related to any of the out-of-the-box bidding strategies that you might be using on this line item. So an example of this would be flat CPM bidding, CPC with uh, pacing or um, PCR, uh, so anything like that, uh, that would be associated to the line item that you set up. So at this, um, at this screen, what you definitely want to double check is um, kind of the targeting template section of the line item. Um, making sure that all of your targeting that you're uh, setting up will 
have inventory um, and also match the line item targeting in general. So um, one first thing to look into is any segments that you have applied at the line level. So this could be first party or third party audience segments that you're applying. Um, and a common thing that we've seen is, for example, if your line item is targeting app inventory, but you have a cookie based segment applied at the line level, then uh, this mismatch will cause the line to not fit. So you just want to be really aware of um, your segment composition in terms of what kind of user IDs are within that segment and does it match your line item targeting uh, so that you would be able to bid. Um, uh, I think just a quick call out here is that our team is really aware of this as well, especially in terms of applying third party audience segments. Some of our third party partners have more of you know, cookie based segments or device ID based segments. Um, so we will also be um, helping you, you know, just to call out which partners you should be using based on the line item targeting that you have. Um, so segment composition, definitely worth uh, taking a look. Um, and then for first party segments specifically, um, you definitely want to check if there's users within that segment as well. That's also a common issue. Uh, we have a full segment tab um, where it shows you the status and then also the user count and if it's populated or not um, within that segment. So, uh, just making sure that you know your segment has users in it and also that it's applicable to your line item um, this would be one of i think a really common line item issue that um, causes no bids uh, empty lists so this is kind of another gotcha i guess um, because again when you set up many campaigns and lines it's easy to have this list object, which lives separately from this overall line item targeting screen. Um, when you set up this list object, you might not add, for example, a deal ID or a domain, or you might not have any items within that list. And then you'll actually apply that to your line item and everything else is set up perfectly, but because your list is empty, you will not bid. So just checking again uh, to make sure that everything that you have on your targeting template on the line level has information in it, or sorry, has items in it that you can actually bid against. Um, so list is another common, common one that we see where it can cause problems. And then for this last one, uh, lines with the same or similar inventory. So within a campaign, for example, you might set up two lines. Uh, they might have two different CPM bids just to test. Uh, maybe you have one at $9 and the other one at $10 and you're testing against the exact same inventory with the exact same bidding strategy of flat CPM pacing. Um, so what this will do is actually have the two lines end up competing and the one with the $10 CPM bid will beat out the $9 CPM bid, just given you know, the bid, the, how we uh, bid with that behavior. So it's, it's um, I think a good call out just to be aware of how our bidding works um, in this case, and um, you know, set up your lines as differentiated as possible so that you're not really competing with yourself and um, you know, not, not bidding um, because you have lines with this similar targeting or targeting similar inventory. So kind of moving into uh, the RTV graph and activity log. So this is a quick snapshot of our UI. Um, this is actually the line item overview screen, and you'll see here that this is the advertiser, the campaign, and then the test line item. So this is our hierarchy here. Um, you'll see on this right hand side that um, we have a real time bidding stops graph um, with bids and wins. And then we'll also have this activity log here right in every line items overview screen. So this is really helpful actually in terms of understanding what your line item behavior is at the current moment. The real-time bidding stats graph on the left-hand side is only one to two minutes delayed. Um, so you'll see in real time, like, is my line bidding or winning? Um, is my line bidding or is it not? Is maybe it's bidding but not winning. So this is actually a really, really useful tool just as a quick snapshot of um, what your line is doing. We also have um, actually a look back window of up to 72 hours or the past three days. And it can be as granular as I think uh, the past one hour, the past three hours, the past six hours, so that you can really see um, you know, in the past three days, like what has my line item been doing? Has anything changed? Um, and then in that same vein, you can check this activity log, which is below this real-time bidding stats graph in our UI. Um, you'll see that these vertical lines here in this graph 
are actually going to correspond to the activity events that you see here. So anytime you make an update, for example, to your targeting template, so maybe you add a DMA or maybe you add um, placement type or a different creative, um, you're going to see that happen um, under you know update targeting template. And then when you click into these um, in the UI, it'll actually expand into a full activity log where you'll see I added geo, um, I added the US as a geotype targeting, and that's why um, you'll see this vertical line happen. So um, in this example, you can also really tell, like, did I make any changes that affected my bidding and winning? And in um, this graph, you know, maybe I did make a change here to my line targeting that stopped my, my bidding and winning. So being able to look at this and understand um, what changes did I make, can I possibly reverse those and, you know, test to see if, if removing that change or reversing that change would get my line to get kicked off again. Um, this is what uh, this RTV graph and then the activity logs are really useful for. So inventory availability, uh, this is a screenshot from our UI as well. This is our Metamarkets tool in the auctions view. Um, you'll see here actually all the auctions that are available to your bidder and that you've set up um, as traffic profiles to come into your account. So um, I think that this tool is actually incredibly useful for line item troubleshooting, and especially in kind of these common use cases below. So one thing that um, anecdotally we've, I've seen a lot is uh, customers that use deal IDs, they might get um, kind of, they might set up a deal ID at the line level and then they do not receive those auctions, uh, maybe because that deal hasn't been activated on the SSP or the exchange side. So, um, you, can uh, you can actually check this with Metamarkets by using the dimensions tool, seeing um, in the past you know, day or whenever you had set up that deal ID, am I receiving auctions from this deal? So that's a really, really common check that you can do to see, um, am I even receiving anything? And that's why maybe I'm not bidding. Um, similarly, so when you do set up deal IDs, do you have uh, you know, extra targeting that you're layering on at the line level that matches the inventory coming through that deal ID. So um, sometimes, you know, you like sometimes publishers might have less avails in certain DMAs, or um, when you layer on more targeting and get stricter about what you're um, targeting against that deal ID, it's also worth checking through meta markets to see what targeting keys um, are coming through on that deal ID specifically. So another one that's really common is actually geo targeting. So uh, for example, if you are adding international traffic to your bidder um, and you haven't run on this yet before, you want to make sure that you're working with your account manager to um, include that traffic or uh, set up new traffic on your traffic profiles at the QPS level so that you're receiving relevant geo traffic for your campaign. So um, I think this kind of relates to de device types as well, but anytime you're adding kind of new campaign types that you haven't run before, whether that's device types or geos or uh, deals even, you can target all these uh, in your traffic profiles um, at the FBS level and you just wanna make sure that you've worked with your um, account manager to uh, get that set up at the QPS level. So these are kind of the common avails checks that I've seen um, across our customers. Um, and then for, in terms of scale checks, so I think the narrower that you have um, targeting um, at the line level, this can actually uh, kind of change what you have available um, in terms of auctions for your line. So even if you are bidding and winning, um, I think it's definitely worth checking to see and lining up your line targeting template against meta markets and using the dimensions that they have as closely as possible. So um, for example, you can have you know, placement type ad size geo location, uh, DMA region state. So all of just using all the dimensions available to you in meta markets and really checking against your line item and seeing, do I have available auctions? At what scale do I have these auctions at? Like given my targeting at the line level and then given um, you know, what you're seeing in meta markets, does your scale on your line item make sense? So um, a lot of times, like if you are targeting really, really narrow targeting on your line level, just make sure um, you know, that it's expected or maybe you might not be getting traffic and we can also work with you on that to try to increase where we can. 
So lastly, just to kind of close this out, um, this is something that, um, you know, if you can't figure out your line item and why it's not bidding, uh, don't worry, you're not alone here. And uh, we definitely have a lot of help resources that you can access. So uh, one thing to call out is definitely our help center, it's help.peasevax.com. So this is actually a really incredible resource. Um, I use it all the time as well. And you'll see everything we covered in this webinar today uh, within our docs. We'll also see um, more information on all of our third party partners. So everything um, you know that has to do with our campaign setup, you can probably find a doc in our help center. So um, you can also feel free to escalate line items to our support team and then also your account team um, so that um, if, if you need extra help, we do have you know, internal tools that we're using to troubleshoot lines that don't fall under kind of the common line item troubleshooting tactics that we use. Uh, so don't hesitate to reach out um, as well. And with that, um, I will open it up to questions. Yes, so uh, first question, by the way, you guys can Oops. keep typing questions in. Uh, and we'll, we'll, we'll you know, we have plenty of time always uh, set, set aside, um, but if, uh, if everything was clear, then uh, you don't have to ask a question. And of course, you can always reach us, info at beeswax.com, if there's something you, you don't remember that you want to ask, and we're always here to help and make sure that gets routed to the right person. So first question, activity logs question. Are you able to see who updated the line item? Yeah, so we can actually pull that by user ID to see um, who is updating that also um, exactly what has been updated and what object. So whether that's, you know, the targeting templates or line level, we also actually have creative logs as well. So if that's relevant and you want to check through, you know, any creative changes that might have updated your line um, or bidding, then you can also use the creative log. But yes, we can use, um, we can also look at the users that have been making updates. Okay. Uh, next question, are there cookie-based audiences that are available on DV? How do we optimize mobile web campaigns with audience segment targeting? So in terms of cookie-based, uh, we should have cookie-based um, audiences through, uh, actually, yeah, I would want to double check on that. I know we do have contextual audiences um, through DV, and I would just want to double check that um, those are available. And then, I'm sorry, could you repeat the second question? Yeah, sure. Uh, how do we optimize mobile web campaigns with audience segment targeting? So optimizing mobile web campaigns. So I would definitely say, um, I mean, there's a number of tools that you can use internal, um, internally to help optimize. I would say that um, definitely using ads.txt, that's a really common way to just qualify your inventory. Um, also checking against, uh, I think, meta markets to see like what kind of um, inventory is coming through and seeing down to the publisher level, um, what are you receiving, what's performant on the sites, um, and then creating kind of include lists against mobile web to, to really optimize for what's performant. Um, and then also, I guess it really depends on your KPIs um, in terms of what you're looking for. So yeah, there's, there's a number of tools that we have um, that can definitely help you to optimize. And then um, leveraging our reporting, I think would probably be the best way to really um, optimize after your life. 